Let us learn how to create this beautiful five step process animation in PowerPoint. You can use this to represent a timeline as well. The thing is, it is surprisingly easy to create this graphic and the animation. Let us jump right in to learn how to do so from scratch. By the way, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. If you want to receive 25 creative presentation ideas to step up your next presentation, please join this five day free email course. The link is in the description box below. All we require to create the graphic for this animation is a simple arrow. Let us go to block arrows and you find this arrow called as arrow notched right. Select that and then draw the arrow like so. Now the next step is to right click, go to size and position and rotate it by 45 degrees and hit enter. Now you make a copy of this by pressing ctrl D. Go to shape format, arrange and then go to rotate and say flip vertical and move it wherever you want. Now we have got our V shape that we were looking for. Go to shapes, pick up the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like so. Now you can make your adjustments by moving the arrow like this so that you can see that there is a perfect V formation. And once it is done, you select this rectangle, press Ctrl C to copy, then select the first shape and then hold the shift button down, select the rectangle and then use shape subtract. Then Ctrl V, since we have already copied this, this particular shape is in the clipboard and therefore by pressing Ctrl V, I am recalling the shape once again. Now let us select this arrow, hold the shift button down and select this rectangle and then use shape subtract. Now we have got our beautiful V shaped arrow. Now let us select this and place it over here. The next step is to fill these shapes with gradient fill. Now I am going to use standard presets for this. Let us select the first one, go to gradient fill and then use one of the preset gradients. In this case, I am going to use the preset gradient with accent 4, medium gradient. The colors don't really matter. In this case, I am just using this purple color and you can see that the direction is towards here. Normally, whenever you see two shapes overlapping, the portion where they overlap is where it is darkest because of the shadow. So we need to change the direction. This particular one is the right one for this. And I don't really want this default line color. So I'm going to use white color as the outline. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for this. So select this, go to format painter in the home tab and then click on this portion. And you can see that we have got our arrow in place. For this also, you can change the direction of the gradient by going to direction and then choose this one. You can see that it is darkest here and then as it goes up, you can see that the darkness goes down. So now we have got one shape in place. The next thing we want to do is to write our text element. So we are going to say you can replace this sample text. Of course, you can write whatever you want and I'm going to increase the font size and then adjust the overall size and then I can place it here. If I want, I can have it as centrally aligned and then place it over here. Excellent. Now let us select both of them. Press Ctrl D to create a duplicate, Ctrl G to create a group and then let us flip it vertically and then place it over here and you can see that this arrowhead matches nicely with the tail and that is because of the shape that we selected originally then we can always change the color. So I'm going to right click and ungroup this first. Then let us select this. And this time I'm going to choose a different gradient fill color. This time this is the better one. And let us choose the exact same direction as we chose earlier. And for this portion, I'm going to once again choose the same teal color and choose the same direction as I did earlier. Now we have got the second portion and we are going to copy the same text element by pressing Ctrl D and we can place it over here. Now I have got the next instance of this process. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to apply custom animation. The first one we are going to use is a simple wipe animation. So let us go to animations and say wipe and it needs to wipe from top. So that is how it goes in. And right after that, we are going to have a wipe animation going from bottom, which is the default direction. And this happens after previous. And while this goes up, we are going to have this one float in with the same duration as 0.5 seconds. And this happens with previous. Now observe this. This is what is happening. Now, the only thing is I want to change the direction of this float in animation. So let us select this, use float down animation, change the timing once again, and it is with previous. 
excellent now let us repeat the same thing for this one as well select this wipe and it is by default going up perfect and then select this wipe and it goes down and with previous and just as we did earlier we are going to use float in but this time it is going to float in from bottom which is the default direction and say 0.5 seconds and this happens with previous and now when i go to animation pane i can see that this second one needs to be actually after previous and now when i go to slideshow this is the first one this is the second one perfect now i can keep extending this for as long as i want for example if i want another instance of this that is the third step in the process i can select all of this press ctrl d to create a duplicate and then place it right next to the previous one and you can see that it is already animated exactly the way we want so we have the third step as well and if you want a fourth step you can copy all these elements and place it over here and you can extend this five step process for as long as you want by changing the size of these arrows now there are multiple ways to present a five step process for example this is another way to present each step of the process and it looks quite interesting because of the animation that we've used Another example is this where we show five project faces where the movement is in a different zigzag direction like this and you can see as the elements come closer they increase in size. Another example is this five step process where a hand comes and presents each of the steps like this and it is quite interesting and novel. The last example is this where we show four inputs to a process and you can see that this is how each input goes into the bag and this is the explanation for each of the steps in the process. These kind of animations definitely make your audience wonder how you created these and they might not even believe that it is possible to do all these things in PowerPoint. And the best part is if you don't have the time to create these kind of elaborate animations, you can just get these templates directly from our comprehensive all-in-one bundle. Because this bundle has more than 4,500 such premium animated PowerPoint templates that you can pick and stick in your presentation slides to complete your presentation in minutes. The link to this product is in the description box below the video. Click on the link, watch this video to get to know more about this product and how it can change the way you create your presentations. If you liked this simple five-step process animation that I showed you just now, you will really love this other tutorial that we created called Four Easy Steps to Create This Rolling Timeline in PowerPoint. It's a beautiful animation. It's very simple to create and will definitely make your audience go wow. So click on the link that you see right now on your screen, watch that video and I'll see you inside that video next.